Porsche Panamera Sport Turismo Turbo 2017 Review Porsche's big four-seater GT finally gets the design appeal to match its dynamic and technical accomplishment, it's not as practical as some fast estates but outstanding in its way. What is it? The Porsche Panamera Sport Turismo is the new, more practical sister of the four-door Panamera liftback, and it's a car you'll probably already have read about at least once this week. After our review on the 456 BHP Panamera 4E hybrid version, which we liked in spite of its slightly mannered and underwhelming petrol-electric hybrid power train, now's our chance to find out if the 542 BHP V8 engine turbo version feels more like the definitive flavor. The Panamera's estate makeover consists of a longer, straighter and higher roofline, along with slightly larger rear passenger door and boot openings. The car's wheelbase and rear overhang measurements remain the same as the standard wheelbase Panamera's. Boot space grows by 25 liters to 520 measured up to the window line, rising to just under 1,400 to the roof with the rear seat backs folded. And with those seat backs in place, the Sport Turismo is also the first Panamera able to carry five passengers, although Porsche prefers to call it a 4 plus 1. What separates this car from a normal four-door Panamera Turbo technically amounts to very little. Adaptively damped air suspension comes as standard, just as it does on the equivalent liftback, while both Porsche's PDCC Sport package, which bundles active anti-roll bars and a torque vectoring active rear differential, and its four-wheel steering system are options. On curb weight, the difference between the standard Panamera and the Sport Turismo is just 40 kilograms. On price, it's less than 4,000 pounds, with the wagon the marginally more expensive car of the two, and for 0 to 62 miles per hour acceleration, the two models are identical. What's it like? For reasons that may already be obvious, I don't really buy Porsche's principal argument for ownership of this car, practicality. But I freely accept that you need do no more than lay eyes on the Sport Turismo to instantly understand another very convincing one. It's true that the car's wider rear passenger door openings, improvement in rear headroom and extended side window section make it a roomier feeling car for four adults, but it's hardly any more of a true five-seater than the existing car is. The thin middle seat, wide transmission tunnel and reduced headroom would make life distinctly uncomfortable for even an older youngster traveling in that seat over any distance. The Sport Turismo's boot is fairly large, but would miss the overall cargo capacity of something like the Mercedes-AMG E63 by a wider and more conspicuous margin than that by which it improves on the standard of the four-door Panamera. It's not as if Porsche has converted a car with a saloon-style, separate boot tier, but rather one with an accessible hatchback-style boot. Porsche's admission is that, while the regular car's boot will swallow four typically sized suitcases, the Sport Turismos may manage five, depending on how you load them. Hardly the stuff of utility car legend. The car's body style has, however, answered this tester's biggest reservation about the Panamera, it has finally given Porsche's big passenger car the design identity and visual charisma that it has thus far lacked. You could even call it the final jigsaw puzzle piece if you consider how much more dynamically accomplished the second generation Panamera is than the first was, and how much more star quality is contained within its range of engines. The simple fact that the Sport Turismo no longer seems so desperate to be mistaken for some curious, overgrown four-door 911, thanks to its elongated profile and window line and smart, rake D pillars. These make all the difference. To drive, the Panamera Sport Turismo Turbo caters to the duality required of a sporting GT car superbly well. When we road tested the Panamera 4S diesel earlier this year, we praised an air suspension system capable of mixing a pleasing layer of ride comfort and isolation with unusually good close body control and an encouraging and consistent sense of connectedness with the surface of the road. This car achieves precisely the same trick. Its relative superiority on handling precision and poise, roll control, 
steering weight and feedback and overall driver engagement over cars of the Audi RS6's ilk is quite clear, and yet it's not produced without a sense of suppleness and quiet from the ride, or without assured all-wheel drive traction or big car stability. Whether you want to stride quickly through the miles or lose yourself in the detail of every successive corner, the Panamera is singularly well placed to oblige you. Porsche's new 4.0-liter twin-turbo V8, all new for the Panamera, destined for service in the next Bentley Continental GT, is a rich and enticing motor, great to listen to and appealing in so many modes of use. It doesn't deliver this car a turn of pace quite as ridiculously urgent as the new E63S, nor even quite as savage as Audi's latest bigger RS cars, and given the Panamera Turbo's price positioning, there's a chance that this may be a slight sticking point for some. But away from the inevitable trading of statistical might, few could find fault with the way the V8 performs on the road. It responds quickly and with prodigious torque revs smoothly and keenly, sounds authentic and drives through an 8-speed twin-clutch automatic gearbox that has just the right instincts about when to kick down and how to balance shift speed with refinement in manual mode, dual mode. Ford Shelby Mustang GT 350R 2017 Review Ford has tried to turn the Mustang into a track machine by putting it on a diet and giving it a new engine. Has it worked? What is it? To put it politely, the Ford Mustang GT isn't the first car you choose to develop into a stripped out, no compromise track machine. For one thing it's a sizable old bus, it's 30 centimeters longer than the Porsche 911, a rather more obvious candidate and some 10 centimeters wider, and for another, it weighs the better part of 1,800 kilograms. There wasn't a great deal Ford performance could do about the Mustang's size, but to give the Shelby GT 350R a fighting chance on track, it ditched the rear seats, stereo, sat-nav and air conditioning, although the latter three items can be added back in optionally. The wheels are exotic carbon fiber items, too, saving 6 kilograms at each corner. The total weight loss over the 5.0 GT is 60 kilograms, which is useful if not exactly transformative. The entire chassis has been overhauled with upgraded components and a much more track-focused setup, while a comprehensive aerodynamic package promises much more downforce than the regular car. Most unusually, though, the warbling V8 engine that powers the conventional Mustang has been ditched for a higher revving 5.2-liter flat-plane crank V8. That's something of a departure for an American muscle car, flat-plane cranks and higher revving V8s have been the preserve of European sports cars until now. The new motor revs beyond 8,000 revolutions per minute, whereas the outgoing crossplane V8 doesn't reach far beyond 6,500 revolutions per minute. The power and torque figures hint at a rev V8 rather than a lazy, torque rich bruiser. 2, 526 bhp at 7,500 revolutions per minute and 429 pounds foot at 4,750 revolutions per minute are not typical Mustang numbers. The soundtrack isn't typical Mustang either, the rumbling score replaced by highly strung snarls and barks. What's it like? As the most extreme Mustang to date, the GT 350R goes to lengths not even the GT 350 model would have considered in the pursuit of racetrack performance. In fact, Ford says it didn't even concern itself with trying to make the GT 350R work on the public road. The standard car's plush leather chairs have been swapped out for heavily bolstered regress, while the steering wheel is wrapped in Olcantara. The sports seats are actually set an inch or two lower than the standard items, and with the steering column at full extension, the seating position is just about perfect. If Ford wants the GT 350R to be assessed as a track car, there are few better places to do just that than Thruxton. The UK's fastest racetrack is a stern test of car and driver, 
mixing ballsy high-speed sequences with tight and technical sections. The GT350R is more than up to it. Whereas the Mustang GT feels about as adept on circuit as a canal boat would, this stripped-out model feels right at home. That much more aggressive suspension setup takes away all of the wallow and floatiness of the standard car, replacing it with agility, control and precision. There are sections of Thruxton that demand so many different things from a car all at once, the start of the lap. For instance, combines a fast left-hand bend with a sharp crest and a heavy braking zone. Many cars would be completely flummoxed by that sequence, but the GT350R swallows it up without any trouble whatsoever. The steering is ultra-sharp and direct, the big Brembo brakes are excellent and the fat Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2 tires generate enormous grip and traction. In the high-speed sections, such as the intimidatingly fast church corner, the car is incredibly stable, thanks in part to the aero package. There's so little body roll or dive under braking that you quickly forget just how big and, let's be honest, heavy the GT350R is. Chasing an 8,000 revolutions per minute redline in a Mustang is a novel experience. The Zingy V8 is right at the heart of the driving experience and it flings the car along at a mighty rate. It's also so much more responsive than the GT's cross-plane V8, it takes only a quick stab of the accelerator to bring the revs up during a downshift, whereas you really have to get into the GT's throttle pedal to awaken the engine, the engine.